Welcome to Deed and Truth, a podcast exploring loving God and loving our neighbor, not just in word, but also in actions, and with the Bible as the source and standard of truth. I'm your host, Tommy Morris, and today I have the honor of having a very good friend of mine in the studio with me today, Mr. Sean Schomer. Thanks for having me. Yeah, man. I'm glad you're here. I'm glad we get to do this. We talked about it a while ago, so glad we're, we're finally getting to record. Me too. Yeah. So Sean <laughs> is going to be sharing his testimony with us today, and uh, it's just a powerful testimony of the work that God's done in your life, and so I just wanted others to be able to to hear that and be encouraged by it. So Right on. You want me to just yeah. start at the beginning? Well, tell us, you know, real quick, just so everybody gets to know a little bit about you, look, who is Sean Schomer? Tell us a little bit about yourself. Uh, I'm Sean Schomer. <laughs> yes. That's, that's my name. That's how... That's how people call me whenever they call me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, uh, I'm a lineman for for the county. Yeah, I work on the power lines. Uh, I've got a little girl. She's 10 years old. I love being a dad. And Yeah, rocking uh, the girl dad shirt today, yeah, right? That's right. Yeah, And, and you have that's a hat. Right. Not wearing it today, but you have a hat that matches. That's right. I've that's got right. a uh, matching. That's right. Combo. Sean and I are both in the proud girl dad category. That's right. Yeah, that's, right. that's awesome. Uh, yeah, I've been in Navarre pretty much my whole life since I was five and I love this town. Yeah. Yeah. And you have a passion for helping I people. I have a passion for helping the rejects of the world. <laughs> <laughs> for which we are. Exactly. Right. <laughs> We've exactly. been there. That's cool. So just to, to kind of get back to your, your testimony growing up, what I want to go all the way back. Right. So growing up, you, you had been to church, right. As a kid. Yeah. yeah. So what yeah. what was that experience like, your first kind of encounter with the religious community? Yeah, well, it was through my dad going to church. Um, when my dad would pick me up, he had uh, – my mom and dad got divorced when I was little. And uh, we moved down here when I was five, like I just said. And my dad would come pick me up, and we'd go to this little, this little church in Panama City. And uh, – that was the only time I really went to church was with my dad when he would pick me up. The relationship between, I guess, me and my dad, kind of, it was kind of strained. So sometimes he would pick me up, sometimes he wouldn't. The times he would pick me up, I kind of wished he wouldn't have picked me up. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, so he would pick me up on Friday, and then Sundays we'd go to church. And there was a little bit of Sunday school, the pastor. It's funny, the stuff you remember as a kid. I just remember right? being a... <laughs> A big old fat guy with his, uh, the collar of his shirt was really tight. And he would, he would reach this certain like crescendo in his preaching. Um, you know, his cheeks would start getting red and you're going to hell, you know? And, and, uh, and so there was this little old lady who would stand up, you know, once he started reaching a certain pitch, this little old lady would stand up in the back of the church and start speaking in tongues. And I remember looking at my dad like, dude, what is that? And the way my dad explained it to me was that God was trying to talk to us through her, but her vocal cords weren't strong enough to handle the power of God's voice. And so I'm freaking out. The pastor on stage is telling me I'm going to hell. I don't want to go to hell. Hell's scary. God is trying to talk to me through a little lady in the back of the room. So I'm like, man, let's let's fire this guy. Let's find a translator. God's trying to talk to me. Let's figure this out. And especially if she's not telling you you're going to go to hell, right? Exactly. If she has a better message, let's hear what she has to say. Exactly. It's kind of like the processing of a child, right? Yeah. So that's where my mind was. And me and my dad's relationship was strained as a child because he he would all the time uh, badmouth my mom and just spread rumors and lies and all kinds of stuff. And I really didn't I didn't like that at all. So, yeah, like I said, he was telling me about the little old lady speaking in tongues, and it blew my mind. So the next, you know, the next time he picked me up, same thing. He reaches a certain crescendo in his preaching. She pops up and starts ha -ka 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 -ka, going all. So crazy. it was like clockwork every week. Yeah, it, was, it, was, yeah. it was a pattern. I was starting to see a pattern in it. And uh, I remember asking my dad one Sunday, I was like, Dad, does this happen every Sunday? And he was like, yeah, sometimes on Wednesdays, too. And I was like, okay. This is just another lie. This is a lie. My my dad's a liar, and this is just one of his many lies, and this is all garbage. And Did you feel like it was just like a 
like staged or put on or something? Yeah, or? it was a production. And I remember my dad getting up on stage one time. There was an altar call. He got up and, you know, they were uh, laying hands and uh, just kind of praying for him and all that. There, It was a big, just a big show. And I remember my dad kind of peeking out from between his hands and making like direct eye contact with me. And then as soon as he saw I made eye contact, he just put his head back in his hands and just started, you know, sobbing uncontrollably. And it just seemed like a big production to me. Mm. And so, yeah, that was, I guess that was my experience with religion as a child from my dad's side. So after that, like, how did that kind of mold your mindset, your kind of heart towards Christianity or religion in general? It hardened my heart for sure. Yeah. I remember uh, we were actually sitting in church and whenever I asked my dad, I was like, man, does this happen every Sunday? And he said, like, yeah, sometimes on Wednesdays too. I was like, this is not real. I don't know. I didn't know what the word atheist was, but I knew that this is not real. Therefore, all religion is not real. Everything is garbage, and I, I don't want to be a part of it. So at that point forward, you were done. <clears throat> yeah, about 10, 11, 12 years old, mm-hmm. I, I became an atheist, so to say, not knowing what an atheist was. Okay. And then, yeah, just kind of lived out my life like that. And from my mom's side, she was raised Catholic. So I remember going to, and this was after me becoming an atheist, so to say. So we went to a little Catholic church down the road. Actually, it was a pretty big Catholic church. (laughs) But we go to a Catholic church, and uh, they, like, the next week or whatever, they put something in the mail. I guess my mom filled out the little card in the seat back in front of her. And they sent something in the mail like, hey, if you make, with all these like tax brackets on it, if you make this amount of money, this is what you should be putting in the offering plate. You know, this much, this much, all that. And my mom, with a few choice words, said, you know, forget that, ripped it up and threw it away. And so that was just further validation that like religion is is garbage. Right, at that point, it's this money scam, right? Yeah. They're, just, they're just trying to get your dollars, right? Yeah. So it just, to you... It just reinforced, you know, kind of what you're already thinking about the church. Exactly. So after you get this uh, request for money right out of the gate after your first visit and you feel reinforced in in holding this view that everything, uh, as far as the church is concerned, is a scam, it's a production, it's fake, and in your mind, God's not real, right? Were, Were there just years of you just basically living for yourself, really no interaction with church or church people or anything like that is that kind of how it it went for a while yeah there was just a long period of me just living for myself in this you know just everything is material tangible stuff that's you know that stuff that's real everything else is not real yeah Um, okay so so i'm gonna blow people's mind because if they see the picture the thumbnail right or anybody that knows you (laughs) they're probably gonna be shocked by this if they haven't already heard it at some point you became a yogi I did. Okay, so did. so tell me from from being an atheist, you ventured into yoga, but at first it it wasn't spiritual, right? It was what was it? Right. Physical, it, like it health, all, health. As it was far as all just yeah. physical, trying okay. to take care of my body. Um, I was dating this girl, and she I was working construction. She's like, hey, you should try, you know, doing yoga because my shoulders, my back, my knees, my joints, my body hurt from using my body to build stuff. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, and so, I, you know, I remember talking to her. I was like, no, I'm not going to do yoga. I'm, I'm a man. <laughs> I don't do yoga. <laughs> so a week later, I walk into a yoga studio and I give it a try. And it felt really good. You go through the stretching, the physical. It's like a workout, a good stretch. And then you just kind of sit down and relax or whatever. So I felt good. My shoulders felt good. My back, my neck, everything felt good physically just from stretching. But at some point, uh, the spiritual aspect of it, it did it. I don't I don't know how to word it, but (laughs) at some point, the fact that it was more than just exercise came around. Right. You, You started to kind of sent something else or studied it more or what I'll let you speak to kind of how that yes. transpired. Yeah. So yoga is, is steeped in spirituality. 
And I I liked it. I was going every day. That was my, I practiced it religiously, so to say. <laughs> and uh, so it was just physically practicing it. And there was all these little workshops coming up. We had a, a, a Swami from Fort Walton. He came and would talk to us. And some of the stuff he was saying about um, meditation and uh, reaching enlightenment and all that sounded very spiritual to me. And I remember talking to one of the other girls there. She, she was an atheist, so we connected because we were both atheists. Um, I remember talking to her afterwards when the when that guy came and talked. I was like, hey, does this does this feel spiritual? Because I don't like that kind of stuff. <laughs> right. right. Like, as an atheist, you yeah. shouldn't, right? I don't like it. Yeah. So... And she's like, yeah, kind of, you know, but it just, it is what it is, you know. And, and so it was a slow burn. There were a couple more talks, a couple more workshops. And I just I started kind of eating away at me. I was like, okay, well, I, I, I feel this, this feeling. I've, I've experienced this kind of spiritual feeling, all this stuff. I don't believe in it, but like I'm feeling this and it's like, what do I do with these feelings, you know? <laughs> So they offered the uh, uh, the yoga teacher training program. It was a 200-hour training program at the studio I was going to. And so I signed up for it, and I took that. And that was the, they teach you everything that there is to teach about yoga. There's the, uh, the anatomy of yoga. You go through the bones, the muscles, the ligaments, the tendons, everything. You go through the history of yoga, where it came from, how it came to the West, all that stuff. And then the spirituality of yoga, which is the religion behind yoga. Yeah, and you and I, so I do want to say this. At some point, Sean and I are going to do an episode to just to talk about yoga. You know, I'm, I want to hear That's right. more of that in detail. But here you are as an atheist. You, you're doing this course, and part of it is not just the, the physical side and the history, but it's the spiritual side. Yeah, And so at some point you started to open up to spiritualization of, of some kind. Yeah, that's right? right. Moving away from full-blown atheism to at least having some openness. Yeah. Just something out there. Yeah. Something spiritual. That's right. Yeah, my heart was hardened through life experiences. And then it opened up. I was open-minded. And there was something out there. I knew there was something out there. So... um yeah, my buddy Jacob preached the gospel to me. He moved in with me, and um, he actually got saved while he was living with me. He went to a uh, Easter service, and he was on his own spiritual walk, but he came back and just started preaching the gospel to me, and uh, it made sense. He bought me a Bible. I was reading through the gospel, started at Matthew, and just started reading through it. I was like, man, this is this is crazy, you know? <laughs> At this point, had you already walked away from yoga? I had I had started kind of walking away from it. I was okay. I was trying to kind of bridge the gap of like, what what does this look like for me? Because this whole spiritual journey, yeah, they're so yeah. they're uh, yeah, they're just they're not the same. And uh, so I was still going to yoga. I was reading the Bible and I was kind of I was praying. And I remember praying like. You know, God, I don't believe in you, <laughs> but <laughs> if you're real, could you, you know, could you give me a sign, you know? And then I went to work one Saturday just to kind of get caught up. You know, I was backed up, just get caught up on some stuff. I was in this little subdivision down the road, and I remember sitting in front of this transformer, and it was just kind of an overcast, cloudy day, and I didn't get any work done that day. My prayers went from, you know... That that was the day where it's like, you know, God, I don't believe in you, but could you give me a sign to like, God, I, I do believe in you. I am a sinner and I, I need you. And I, I believe, I believe in you. I believe in the work of your son. And I, I believe God, I believe in you and I'm sorry for everything. Lord, please forgive me. And I remember just looking at the trees the trees look differently. The clouds look differently. The squirrels, you know, running around the trees, like everything just looked different because I was, I was a new creation. I was born again. I got saved sitting in front of a transformer <laughs> doing line work. <laughs> That's the awesome work of the Holy Spirit, right? Yeah. That, uh, that this long journey and then you're just sitting at work and, um, and God just right there, like, you know, 
not the most convenient time, right? You're supposed to be working, yeah. right? But God's like, now, yeah. right? That's now powerful. Is, now is my time. Yeah. yeah so and it, it wasn't a it wasn't a perfect gospel presentation either. <laughs> Jacob was still working on his his uh, his pitch. You know, he just he had just gotten saved a couple months prior. He was just eager to share. Yeah. The good news. And, Just a uh, raw presentation, yeah. right? Like no no outline, no fine points. That's or, right. Yeah. Yeah. Just like this is what God did for me. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. That's powerful. I mean, it's crazy that you in, in that started reading the scripture, right? Yeah. You know, faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. And you had started putting the word of God in you and, and God just kept doing that work, you know, until that day of just calling you in front of that transformer. Yeah. And he transformed you. Don't yeah. sh- yeah, <laughs> like, there you go. Right. <laughs> got, got to put some idea of a dad joke in there, right? right. <laughs> so what was like, you know, what was life like kind of right after that? I mean, how did, how did things change for you? Well, immediately after that, I remember me and Jacob just talking nonstop all the time. I came home and was like, dude, I got saved today. <laughs> and we rejoiced. We celebrated. <laughs> and, uh, but, I was still doing yoga. I was still a yoga teacher. And so I had, I had previously stopped teaching yoga, you know, prior to my salvation, but I was still practicing. And like I said, I was trying to figure out what this looks like. And now I'm convicted. This is not good. So I threw away like all my books, all my, you know, all these, the stones, the chakras, you know, posters and all the stuff, the the oils, the stones, all the stuff that helped you align your chakras and try to reach this spiritual enlightenment. We, I mean, we cleansed the house. <laughs> I threw it all in the garbage can. <laughs> and, uh, but I had already booked this yoga retreat to go down to the Panama Canal. I spent a bunch of money on it. And, you know, at least like three or four months prior to getting saved. So I'm like, man, I already dumped a bunch of money on this. Like, I'm convicted. I don't want to go down there. I don't want to go hang out with a bunch of, you know, pagan hippies. <laughs> but, uh, but I do want to see the Panama Canal. You can Canal. say that because you were one. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um, yeah, I do want to see the Panama Canal. Uh, I don't want to waste this money, you know. So I went and it was, it was bad. God gave me a, the slap on the wrist. <laughs> the, uh, the they were doing chanting and all this you know all this crazy yoga hippie stuff and i remember going down i didn't want to go down i was like ah, i don't need to do that that's not right so they're like oh come on you know come on so I'm like okay i give in i go down and they're i'm like i'm just going to pray while they're doing their chanting and they're i'm just surrounded by these hippies chanting to chanting to gods doing these doing these mantras and these yogic chants, trying to, you know, harness the power of these, these yoga gods, these Hindu gods, which we can talk about in the yoga podcast. But anyways, so I got like deathly ill that, that night got, uh, confined to my, my little cabin that I was staying in, which was good. Gave me like two, two and a half days to just be alone (laughs) and repent and, and be convicted that, uh, this is not for me. So I came back, stopped doing yoga, threw the rest of the stuff away, and uh, yeah, just started living forward from there. Got plugged into church. Yeah. Yeah. Started yeah. studying more. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. And actually, I got, uh, me and Jacob, we were going to a Church of Christ, and I got baptized there. And so the I got baptized. That was great. Um, but then it started kind of becoming like they it's like taking the lord's supper was mandatory like works oriented yeah yeah like all right so you 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 plug into a church early on and you Mm -hmm. get baptized there like that's super cool right following in believers baptism yeah that's right but then you felt like after a while um it it seemed like there was a heavy emphasis on works and right is that kind of like doing things that were like man like you have to do these things to be in god's favor or to like maintain your salvation, yeah, that kind absolutely. Of the, the, the vibe. Uh, and it, it wasn't necessarily worded like I had to maintain my salvation, but after I got saved, I was hungry and I wanted I would I wanted some leadership. I wanted someone to talk to me and disciple me. And uh, I remember the pastor is like, "Hey man, I, like 
I want to talk to you. And he's like, yeah, you know, I'd, I'd love to talk to you uh, next week. And then he would run out the door <laughs> and I never got a chance to talk to him. But one of the uh, elders there or deacons or whatever, he, um, you know, we took the Lord's Supper every every Sunday. And I, I was reading, you know, like before you, I don't know the verse, but before you offer your gift before the altar, like if you have anything against your brother, like go settle that, then come offer your gift. And I was angry with my brother and I, I didn't feel like I should take the Lord's Supper. And so, so I didn't. And the, you know, the guy, one of the guys, I just didn't take it, but I guess he had spotted me not taking the Lord's Supper and pulled me aside afterwards. He's like, Hey, I noticed you didn't take the Lord's Supper. I was like, yeah, man. I'm, I was like, I'm angry with my brother and I'm just, you know, I don't feel like it's right. I need to go settle that with him before I, you know, before I do that. And he's like, no, 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 you, that, that doesn't matter. That, that piece of scripture doesn't matter. I was like, okay. I was like, well, what does it mean? You know, I was like, teach me if I'm wrong, teach me. You know? right. And, uh, he's like, well, just, just come take the Lord's supper. And he pulls me up to the, the front. We, he prays for me and we take the Lord's supper. And I was like, this, this isn't right. You know? And, uh, me and Jacob got talking about it. He had some other issues and we just kind of started bouncing around finding churches and stumbled across live Oak after going through every other church in Navarre. <laughs> <laughs> you did the tour, huh? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, I got plugged in, uh, found my church family, became a member, and yeah. Well, I'm glad you did because yeah. I got to meet you. That's right. Met you like what, like a year ago, maybe? Men's mm, men's yeah, dinner, like, like men's get like together, I think. Yeah. Share your testimony. I think you also like smoked a pork butt or something that night. Oh yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that was like year and a half. Oh man. It's been a while. Yeah, it was the, year, night, yeah, year and of, and the night of the meat sweats. Yeah, the meat sweats. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I remember that. <laughs> yeah, that was good. Yeah, and it yeah. was something I appreciate from y'all in the Live Oaks Men Ministry. Y'all did that night, and the reason me and you got to talk is because it's like, hey, uh, you know, we all have our buddies that we talk to. We're going to take 10 minutes, and y'all are going to talk to somebody you've never talked to before. That's right. Which put me way outside my comfort <laughs> zone. <laughs> and so I talked to you and just kind of shared a little bit of my testimony. You shared yours. And, yeah, now here we are. Yeah, I think you won a book that night, too, right? Didn't you win a door prize? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I was like, oh, just meet this guy who wins. Like, it's good. <laughs> But hey, I mean, you brought pork butt. It was yeah, really, that's the, right. yeah. It, that's if right. you smoke meat and bring it, you should win something. Yeah, you, you deserve, <laughs> you a deserve to win yeah. something. <laughs> yeah, it was good. And I mean, so now you know we've we've gotten to know each other a lot better now, and I, and it's been just awesome watching the work that God's done in your life. You know, and we got to go on mission together in Zambia, yeah, which right. was which was pretty powerful. Maybe sometime we'll record and talk about that. Um, but it's just doing life group together, you know, so it's just, it's been cool to really uh, kind of be alongside you along this journey, man, and, yeah. and just continue Thanks, to see too. God's work in your life and all he's doing and what he'll be doing here soon in the future. That's right. <laughs> so, yeah, looking forward to more testimonies uh, to set that foundation and just be able to hear your testimony it was awesome. I think it's probably the, like, the third or fourth time I've had a chance to hear it <laughs> yeah. and it never gets old. Like, uh, I love just how God, you know, did a work in your life and brought you to salvation. Like, it's so cool. Yeah. Right yeah. On. Thanks, man. Yeah. Thanks for joining me, man. Thank you for listening. Be sure to subscribe to the podcast on your favorite podcast platform. That way you won't miss an episode. We're dropping new episodes every Monday. So when you subscribe, go ahead and give us a five-star rating. Share the podcast with your friends. We also look forward to connecting with you on social media. You can find us on Twitter at deed underscore truth and on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube at the Deed and Truth Podcast. You can also check out our website at deedandtruthpodcast.com. You can leave us a voicemail, give us a review there, or just send us a message. All right, until next time.